On the premiere edition of the Nesson College Hockey Podcast, we talked about what should be a fascinating season of Hockey East coverage on Nesson, as well as what should be a great season of college hockey as a whole. We also speak with Providence head coach Nate Lehman as his team prepares to face off with Maine in the Hockey East season opener. Hey everybody, welcome to episode one of the Nesson College Hockey Podcast. My name is Dakota Randall, alongside Mike McMahon. Mike, how are you? Good, how's it going? Good. Uh, you know, self-explanatory. This is going to be a all things college hockey podcast on Nesson, um, with a heavy emphasis on Hockey East, as you can imagine. A uh, large part of, large reason for that is, at Nesson, we are happy to have a new partnership with Hockey East, uh, sponsored by Rockland Trust. We're really happy about that. And we're going to have a lot of content on Nesson and Nesson Plus throughout the winter. Most of you know that, you know, typically Nesson Plus houses the Bruins or the Red Sox, and both teams are playing at the same time. Sometimes there's some college content on there. But this winter, we have, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of college hockey games, specifically Hockey East, as well as a lot of all of college programming. So we figured with such an increase on Hockey East and college hockey on the network, we would do a podcast. And I know I'm a big college hockey fan, particularly of UNH. Uh, and I know, Mike, you are as well. So uh, people listening might be familiar with me from the Red Sox podcast for some of my horrible takes. I'll try to clean them <laughs> up this time around. Uh, but why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Yeah, so um, I'm actually, I'm not from a hockey East school. I'm a little bit of an outsider. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited to get going on this. You know, uh, college Where did you go to school? I, I went to Suffolk. Suffolk, that's so, right. So okay. D3, go Rams. Uh, there we go. And um, but, uh, I, you know, I, college hockey is such a loyal following, and um, I definitely feel like this is somewhere where there's uh, been, uh, you know, there's, there's, there can never be a shortage of college hockey content, and, and I do feel like uh, this, is a, this is a cool opportunity for us to take a deep dive and have some fun and uh, talk some college puck because, yeah, like you said, there, there's a lot of exciting games on Nesson this, this year, and uh, uh, I'm excited to, um, to, you know, watch a lot more college hockey last year. I definitely feel like I, in past years I've been wanting to watch more and more because, you know, it's something I've always enjoyed. Yeah, I would agree with that, and I've always said that, uh, along with, I believe, soccer, and that's a different conversation, I think college hockey is the most underrated sports pro uh, product in the country, you know, especially when you get really passionate fan bases and some of the talent on display. Uh, it can be a really great product, and we're fortunate enough in New England to you know, have what I think is the premier uh, college conference, and that's Hockey East. And you mentioned uh, the games getting right underway, uh, you know, right off the bat, a lot of great action. Uh, that starts this weekend with Providence versus UMaine. And on paper, it might seem like a bit of a mismatch, but that's it's an early game, uh, early in the season to have a Hockey East matchup like that. And we actually uh, were lucky enough to talk to Providence head coach Nate Lehman uh, earlier today. Actually, you woke up and conducted that interview. Yes. Uh, so we got to talk to him, hear his thoughts on his team heading into the season. You know, they were in the Frozen Four last year, lost to Minnesota Duluth, the eventual champions. We'll absolutely get to them. Uh, so, you know, we were really fortunate to talk to head coach Lehman. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, but, you know, again, this is not just a hockey's podcast. This is all college hockey. So I want to get into just, you know, not, I don't want to look back at next season so much. You know, we, we've all, we all know what happened there. You know, Duluth beat UMass Amherst. Duluth has won two uh, consecutive championships. And, you know, I think they're the big story going into this season where they would be, I believe, the first three-peat in college hockey since the University of Michigan in 1951 to 1953. That's the only three-peat uh, for national champions in college hockey history. So I'm just, I, you know, I think really that's, for me, that's the number one storyline heading into this year is can Minnesota Duluth pull off the three-peat? But what about you? What are you, what are you thinking? I think it's pretty safe to say that the sports changed a little bit since, uh, since Michigan did it back in the 50s. Just, uh, yeah, just a little but, bit. But, you know, the interesting thing nationally is really it's a wide open field. There's not a ton of teams with a lot of continuity this year. And Minnesota Duluth is one of the few teams that actually does bring back a lot of guys. Um, you know, Hunter Shepard and Nett. Uh, was an absolute beast last year uh, with a 176 and net a 923 save percentage. Um, you know they've re they, they've they've used him. He's been their guy the last two the last two years in the national championship. He goes for a third. Um, five of their six starting defensemen are back. So really, you know, you don't want to say this early that everyone's kind of chasing Minnesota Duluth, but. They're a wagon, and, and they're definitely um, as solidified a number one in, in a preseason poll as is, is you could probably have right now. Yeah, they got 49 out of the 50 first place votes. Actually, Minnesota State was the only one to also get a first place vote. Uh, they're going to be a very interesting team to monitor. But yeah, like you said, I mean, Duluth is bringing back 
honestly a juggernaut. I mean, they have the same goalie, basically the same defense. You know, they have a Hopi Baker candidate in Scott Prunovich, who I believe is a, he's with the, a draft pick of the St. Louis Blues. Um, he had a bit of a production in offense last year. You know, they'll want to have, see more from him this season. But, uh, you know, he's a great player. And like you said, I mean, they have to be the proverbial favorites going into this season. But, you know, so they're number one. I just want to kind of go over the top ten real quick because, uh, you know, the initial uh, USCHO rankings are out. Minnesota Duluth is number one, followed by Denver number two. Minnesota State, again, the only other first place vote. Then UMass Amherst, Cornell, St. Cloud, Providence, Quinnipiac, Notre Dame, and Clarkson. So, you know, I have, I think there's some interesting stuff in there, particularly as it pertains to Hockey East. But, you know, what are your sort of initial thoughts looking at those top 10 rankings? Yeah, there's a lot of good variety uh, between conferences and stuff. That's my big takeaway, too, um, is it's different. It's, it's good to see so much parity in college yeah, hockey. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of those teams that you named have a lot of underclassmen. They have a lot of freshmen coming in, a lot of new pieces. Um, so it is going to be interesting how it shakes out. And I, I know we're going to get more into the Hockey East, you know, part of it later. But uh, I'm really, you know, I really think that those top three Hockey East teams you could shuffle them up a, f a few different ways and, and be totally justified in that. Um, so I think it is interesting to kind of compare the Hockey East preseason poll to where these teams stack up uh, against, you know, nationally comparative to see how other people view these teams nationally. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, you mentioned it. Why don't we just get right into it? Uh, again, there are some discrepancies in what was the, the Hockey East coaches poll. In their rankings, they have Boston College at number one. UMass at number two, Providence at number three, Northeastern four, BU five, Lowell six, New Hampshire, Maine, UConn, Vermont, Merrimack. So, you know, my biggest takeaway there is they have BC at number one, while the national rankings have BC at number 11. I mean, I think BC is going to be a great team. They have five NHL draft picks that joined the team uh, for this season. Um, you know, they got three first round picks in that bunch, including Matthew Boldy, Boldy uh, who I think was one of the top newcomers in the country. Alex Newhu, Spencer Knight, and David Cotton, who could be a Hobie Baker candidate. So, yeah, I, I agree with the hockey's coaches that, that BC is one of the best teams, but it's weird to see them further down in the rankings. Uh, you know, the, the national rankings or the people that vote on that stuff are more high on Providence and Mass. Um, but, yeah, so just, you know, what do you think? What do you think the reason for that is? Or do you agree with that? Are you higher on UMass than BC? Um, or do you agree with the, with the national poll, I should well, say? Well, you know, everybody is talking about this BC recruiting class, and actually um, Nate Lehman brings up, bring, brings up their recruiting class as well um, in my interview with him. But, you know, you, the names you mentioned, Boldy, Newhook, uh, Spencer Knight uh, in goal, um, some really good upside on those guys. The, the one concern I have about BC is they really get right after it in their schedule. Um, so we're going to find out pretty quickly if these kids are going to sink or swim. And it might take them till the holidays to figure it out. You know, you see BC last year, the terrible start that they got off of, and then they kind of had to charge back through. And they end up fighting their way to the Hockey East final just to maybe try to get an NCAA tournament, NCAA tournament berth, which they missed out on. Right. Um, so, you know, really it, it's tough to say because you don't know how these freshmen are, are going to do in their first action. You know, uh, Providence is another place. They brought in a bunch of new guys. There isn't a lot of continuity there. Um, it, it's, it's really about it, coaching is going to play a, a huge part. And, and I think I give PC the advantage early just because of what Lehman's been able to do with this club and how he's been able to reload over the last eight years there. I agree. And, you know, again, hockey is lucky. There's so much great coaching in there. And, again, you – well, there, it's definitely, there's definitely some teams that are clear, clearly better than others. No one on in the comments is really an easy out. Um, so I think we, you know, and again, in the national polls, also receiving votes are Northeastern, BU, and Lowell. Uh, no love for, for UNH, Maine, UConn, Vermont, and Merrimack, but I'm wondering if anybody or any of those teams that are getting overlooked if, or are you seeing as a potential sleeper. I, I mean, it's going to sound like bias. I'm looking at UNH simply because they're a young team. They played in a school record, I think NCA record, 14 overtime games last year. So they were right there. And you like to think maybe, uh, you know, these kids get a year older. They have that experience. They can find a way to get out on the winning end. I talked to Coach Souza at Hockey's Media Day 
uh, a few days back, and he seemed to be confident that in, in that very thing, that they're going to be able to use what they, what they learned last season and come out on the winning side more often. So I think they could sneak up on teams. I'm not saying they're a candidate to make the tournament, but I think they could make some noise come hockey's tournament time. So I just think they're a sleeper to watch, but I wonder if you have yeah. any team as well. I think if you look at the latter half of last year, uh, I, this was something I was going to bring up when we talked about the, the Providence-Maine matchup this week, but Maine was not a team that you really wanted to play down the stretch last year. If you look at their numbers after the turn of the new year, they were actually playing really well. Right. And, and they bring back a goalie who, who, for a team that had their fair share of struggles last year, had a pretty good season. So, you know, I think that Maine is a team that could give a lot of Hockey East teams trouble throughout the year. Um, I And... You know, they're a team that, you know, like you said with UNH, might not be a tournament team for the NCAA, but right. is definitely somebody that can upset some people and maybe prevent some other, you know, teams from, from getting into the tournament. And that can make, make all the difference in the world when it comes time for seeding in the national tournament. Uh, but so, you know, let's, let's backpedal to go back to Providence, who you brought up. And, you know, we want to get to our interview with, with Coach Lehman. You know, I think, I think. My, I'm, I'm tending to lead, lean with UMass Amherst, that I think they're the favorite. But I agree with you that Providence really, by the end of the season, could be the best team in the conference. Now, sure, Jay O'Brien, uh, I believe now is in the British Columbia Hockey League, uh, draft pick of the Flyers, one of the best players. He's gone. They graduated some seniors, so they absolutely have some holes to fill. But as you mentioned, Coach Lehman is really good at adjusting and getting the best out of his guys. And so I'm really interested to see, you know, what he gets out of them. You spoke to him for about eight minutes today. You know, what was your takeaway from speaking with him? Uh, he seems, you know, nervously optimistic, you know, how most coaches are th this time of year. You know, it's kind of tough uh, for coaches to um, have a real good read on their team until you really drop the puck and start playing games. And it kind of seems like um, that's where Lehman is with his club. You know, right. obviously he has a lot of confidence uh, in some of the new guys that they're bringing in. And um, really, when you look at it, they've had – one of the most consistent strings of success in the country in the last like eight years here since Lehman's taken over um, and you know so we touched on that a little bit and uh, but you know I also thought he had some interesting thoughts about starting the season off with a hockey East uh, matchup against Maine I, I thought he had some interesting things to say there as well right and again so Providence and Maine this weekend Saturday at 4 p.m. on Nesson uh, should be a great game. Again, getting into Hockey East action right away in the first weekend. Unusual. So I'm looking forward to hearing what Coach Lehman has to say about that. So let's get right into the interview. All right. So we're here with Providence College uh, Coach Nate Lehman. Uh, Coach, thanks for uh, taking the time. You're our, our first guest on the podcast. Um, so appreciate you being here. Well, great. Very honored to be here and honored to be the first guest. Awesome. Awesome. We'll, we'll jump right in. Um, Nate, you're, you're entering year nine here, and, um, you know, looking back at uh, Providence history in your tenure, uh, it, it's kind of hard to ignore the, the five years before you took over the program and, and where it was. You know, you inherited a team that had five straight losing seasons. Uh, you've been to the tournament, the NCAA tournament, six years in a row now. You haven't missed a Hockey East tournament in your tenure. W what sparked the turnaround, uh, and, and what does that streak mean to you? Um. <clears throat> I don't know. I guess the streak, the streak, you know, proud of the streak just because we want to, you know, continue to have success. We don't want to be a one year wonder. Um, it's extremely competitive in college hockey now with all the guys leaving early for the NHL. It's really hard to sustain success. And, um, you know, one of my mottos behind the scene is to keep base camp close to the peak. And we've been able to do that. Um, we want to gun for national championships every year. That's our goal. Um, and, uh, and you know, being in six straight tournaments has is, is allowed us to, to get there. You know, as far as the five losing seasons before, um, you know, before our staffs got here, I, you know, I, I really can't speak to that. I mean, it's Providence is a great place. We were able to get it going and start, you know, get a good, really big first class um you know, with John Gillies and Mark Jankowski and Nick Saraceno and guys like that, that we're able to kind of spark the program and get it going. Perfect. Um, you know, you're coming off another Frozen Four. Um, a lot of turnover, but are you happy with the way, you know, your guys kind of responded in the off season? and are you pleased with the off season that you guys did have? Well, I'm, I'm nervous, I can tell you that. Nervous <laughs> and anxious. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of new faces. And uh, it, it really, really feels like this is the first year we've taken over the program. 
um, because we have so many new faces and so many young guys um, that, you know, we're just starting from scratch with our culture, starting from scratch, uh, teaching the guys what it takes to win, um, how you have to earn it, you know, that you're, you're not just going to get a win because you put a jersey on. And um, so, you know, it's, I would say, anxious to get going against Maine here and, you know, kind of, you know, kind of that first day mentality of just, wow, we just took the program over and we really got to build this the right way. Right. Uh, you, you know, you mentioned the main matchup, um, the opening write-up with a Hockey East opponent. Um, is, is, do, do, you, do you like that? Is, do you think that's a benefit to you guys um, to kind of jump in and face a conference opponent, get conference, have a chance to put conference points on the board right away? Well, I, I, you know, I, I don't like it, no, but, but that's the way it worked out. And um, our school is, is having homecoming weekend, and they asked us to move a game, um, and this was the only game that we could move. So that's, that's why we we're, we're playing a conference game first. But, mm-hmm. hey, you know, at the end of the day, it's their first game too. And no matter who you play first game of the year, it's their first game. So you're going to play a lot of really good teams along the way. Um, let's start out with a real good one and, and see where we're at. Right. You, you mentioned so many new guys. Uh, you know, Maine obviously, you know, isn't uh, in the Hockey East, you know, preseason poll uh, as high as you guys are. But, you know, with so many new guys, a, a lot of guys getting their first taste of, of, of action here. Uh, you know, how do you make sure that they're focused to, to get the season started the way that you guys want it to? Well, I mean, you know, you we have to control what we can control, and that's our effort and our execution. Um, Maine had a very good second half last year, very good. Like, they beat uh, – in back-to-back weeks, they beat the, the top three teams in the league. You know, they beat us, they beat UMass, and I, and I believe the third team was Northeastern. They beat us, um, you know, three weekends in a row up in their building. So, you know, they had a very good second half. They got, They have a lot of veteran forwards. Uh, the staff's been there a while, so they're established now. And, you know, I, I, I think we're going to have our hands full. But for us, you know, we have to we have to dictate our game. That's going to be the key. You know, if we can dictate our game um, and and get our young guys to execute well, um, I, you know, I'm not, as, I'm not as concerned about the experience if we can execute well. Exactly. Uh, you know, you're not the only team that, that's going through a lot of overturn. I feel like nationally there's a lot of teams that are kind of re-piling up, it, and, you know, after the top couple teams, it's kind of a free-for-all there who, who might round out the Frozen Four. Uh, is that the way you see it nationally? Do you see an opportunity for, for these young guys if they click to be able to put together a, a, a special run? Well, I mean, I don't know. I haven't looked at that, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm more concerned about Maine. And and I want to make sure I keep the team's focus on Maine. I mean, it, so much happens throughout the course of a of a seven month season that you, you can't. You know, I, I think if you set expectations or um, or low expectations or high expectations, you're you're worried about that, and it becomes noise for you. And you know, with this young group, we just got to get better every day, one day at a time. Keep getting better. Um, focus on what our weaknesses are, and make sure we're 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 trying to play our game. Mm-hmm. One thing that that might help you guys, uh, I imagine, with that overturn is you bring in Michael Lackey, um, who who comes in transferring from Harvard, uh, a guy who has experience um, in net. How how much do you anticipate him, you know, being able to help your team with some experience in net? Well, I mean, I, I you know we're hoping that 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 helps because uh, you know we lose Hayden Hockey, who set records within the school of shutout wins and conference wins and overall wins. I mean, he, you know, he basically set a lot of records at our school. So we have big shoes to fill there, but, um, but we think, you know, Michael or, or whether it's Gabe Mullet Hill or whether it's uh, Jake Kacharski, I think between th- those three guys, we, we hope to have one emerge. Perfect. Uh, last question for you, coach. Uh, you know, we'll exclude you guys from from this question, but uh, do you have a, a someone in Hockey East that you think might surprise people this year? Well, I don't know. I mean, I you know, I I know BC really has a has a good recruiting class, and they return a lot of older guys, and I think that's a big key to winning um, is returning a lot of older players that have been through the wars with you. Um, but 
Yeah, I don't know, and I you know I really don't know until the until they drop the puck of what direction what teams are going to go. You know, so we're just looking forward to hitting the ice. I can tell you that. Yeah, we're looking forward to watching it. Uh, Coach, I really appreciate taking the time. Uh, Providence College hockey coach Nate Lehman joining us on the podcast. Thanks for having us. Uh, thanks no, for being here. No problem. Talk to you thanks. soon. And we're back again. Thanks to Coach Lehman for taking the time to talk to us. Interesting to hear him talk about playing a hockey game so early in the season. A lot of the other stuff he said, I thought it was really interesting. And again, you can watch Maine and Providence play this weekend on Nesson, Saturday at 4 p.m. Again, that's Saturday at 4 p.m. on Nesson. All of our hockey's coverage brought to you by Rockland Trust. Uh, I know you, you seem to have a big interest in this game, Mike. So I just want to know, you know, what are you, what are you looking out for? Give me sort of the X and O's take on Providence, Maine. Because I think it's an underrated game. I think it's one of the most intriguing games on the national schedule. And we'll get to the, the national schedule in a little bit. But I think it's one of the more interesting games on the slate for this weekend. Yeah, you know, it, not a lot of teams start out, you know, really heavy in the first week here. So it, 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 I think the coolest thing about this game is that we get a Hockey East game, like, right off the bat. I think that's really cool. Um, but, yeah, like, like in, the, in the talk with Lehman, um, you know, I think it's going to be really interesting to see uh, how Mikey, Michael Lackey can do uh, holding down the back end, taking over for Hayden Hawkeye, uh, Hockey. Hockey, uh, who yeah. <laughs> I botched it, but one of the best college hockey names of all time right there. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, so it's going to be interesting to see how they move on from him and how all their underclassmen, um, you know, kind of handle – the expectations of playing at BC, but one thing that you always look at with the Friars is, is Lehman's system is is as good as any, and they play puck possession, they play responsible hockey, and and if he can get these young kids to buy into the system, if they're not playing hero ball, you know, for lack of a better term, they're going to be good because that that's what Lehman's done. I mean, this is a guy who's gotten attention from NHL teams. It's for a coaching job. You know, this guy knows what he's doing. He runs a good system there. And um, I, I'm interested to see if, you know, the things that he's nervous about, if he has reason to be or not. Um, and then on the other side, you know, Maine is, like I said earlier, they're, they're not an easy team to play against. And, and Jeremy Swayman had a great year in goal last year. And, and if he could back that up, you know, with another year under his belt, um, J.D. Greenway, who um, you might know his older brother, uh, Jordan, who's in, he plays for the Wild now, I believe. I think he's with yes. the Wild. Um, you know, coming up through the ranks was a great hockey, was a great player at BU. His younger brother, JD, now joins Maine to help on the back end. They lost five of their six starting defensemen. So, you know, some, some interesting things to look at there. You know, Mitchell Fossier, I, I think, is another interesting uh, player on, the, on Maine's top line. So, yeah, it, definitely it's nice to get a Hockey East game right away, and, and I'm looking forward to uh, tuning into it. Cool. Uh, yeah, me too. And, again, I, 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 I think – the best thing about hockey East is a lot of these games are always competitive, regardless of who's playing. Uh, and I just I think that's going to be that's going to be a great game to watch. Um, again, I think one of the best ones that we'll see this weekend. Uh, but it's not the only one. So I want to you know kind of segue into the the schedule at large. Uh, you know I I think it's kind of a light start. I think the big game I'm looking at is Boston University visiting Union. Uh, neither of those teams beginning the season in the national rankings. Uh, but, you know, they both got votes, some votes, uh, sort of the honorable mentions, if you will. Um, but I think that's a game to watch, to watch out for. Um, I'm kind of interested to see what UConn brings to the table this year. They're facing Sacred Heart on Saturday. Uh, Merrimack versus Lake Superior State. I want to see Lake Superior, not so much Merrimack. Well, I want to see what they got, but I think we're going to have a down uh, season from them. But just in general, if you have any other games on the schedule this weekend that you are particularly interested in. Yeah, you know, we'll start right from the top there. BU Union is a, uh, another really great um, kind of first week matchup and a really good uh, measuring stick for what we might see from BU this year. Uh, another team that you know, has a lot of new faces, uh, has seen a lot of overturn just about every year for the last few years. Uh, a lot of one and dones, a lot of guys leaving early to go pro. Um, you know, but what interests me the most about that game is Hockey East in general last year did not play very well out of conference. Um, you know, BU and BC combined to go 316 and 1 in their non conference schedule, which played a large part in neither of them making the NCAA tournament. Hockey East as a whole was 54, 49, and 8 against non-conference opponents. So, you know, while we ended up with two Hockey East teams in the Frozen Four, for some reason during the regular season, the Hockey East doesn't, they weren't really dominating their non-conference schedules. Right. Um, so this is a nice measuring stick to see how that might shape out this year to see if Hockey East can improve their uh, non-conference schedule 
that's the most not, uh, intriguing non-conference matchup to me this week. Agreed. Uh, I also, for some weird reason, have. I wish I could watch it. I don't know how I'm going to be able to, but I'd like to watch Denver versus Alaska Fairbanks. I don't know why I have an interest in Alaska Fairbanks, <laughs> and that Denver's going to be so good. I just like. I like. I think that would be a cool game to go to in person, but yeah. I also would like to watch it. Uh, and Denver's the only team that has a longer streak of NCAA tournaments than Providence, too. So, you know, you're looking at two of the you know, most consistent programs, um, you know, having pretty good games there right off the bat. I did not know that. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, and again, Denver is number two in the preseason rankings. Uh, so listen, it's, it's so early. Uh, so early. The season hasn't even started yet, so obviously it's early. But uh, we we're kind of just all, you know, we're projecting because we don't know how these teams are going to go. Uh, but what we can do is sort of look ahead to, you know, let you know things that we're interested, players we're watching, teams we're watching, uh, you know, what's sort of piquing our interest. And so I just want to kind of get into, you know, what are your, whether it be a bold prediction, a player you're watching, uh, just something that, you know, something that you're really high on as we enter the college hockey season. Uh, I'll do you first and then I'll, I'll get to me. Yeah, I'll, I'll get into a team that we actually haven't even brought up here in, in this podcast yet, which is uh, kind of surprising considering, uh, you know, they kind of dominated the Boston City uh, competition last year, and that's Northeastern. Uh, and specifically, Tyler Madden um, had an amazing freshman year. Kind of, I bet NHL GMs were kind of kicking themselves that they let that guy fall to the third round. Um, and, you know, I think the Canucks have a really good one there. That, that's a kid who I yeah. think can really compete for a Hobie Baker early. Um, you know, he's an electric player. Um, he really can do a lot with the puck. He's really dynamic, and you got to love the Sellies too. Yeah. Um, yep. Absolutely legendary celebrations in. Uh, you, I think when they beat UMass was the first one, and then and then in the uh, hockey in the Beanpot semifinal, he, he broke out another one. So uh, Tyler Madden for sure is on everyone's watch list. He's not exactly a sleeper. He's well known, but right. uh, he's he's a, a can't miss guy. Yeah, uh, if we're, while we're talking about, you know, Hobie guys and, or guys that could win that award and everything, I'm looking at uh, someone like Alex. I've never gotten his name right. Alex Limoges, Limogues. Either way, uh, offensive stud on Penn State had 23 goals, 50 points last season. If he's going to get any chance, has any chance of getting that award, that team has to make it into the tournament, maybe even win a game. Uh, they just missed last year. But either way, he's, he's a great player. Not drafted yet, uh, but regardless, good player to watch. Uh, we talked about Mitchell Chafee. Uh, you know, could it be back-to-back Kobe -back Bakers for UMass after Kale McCarr won it last season and then went into uh, joined the Colorado Avalanche for the playoffs and looked really, really good. Um, oh, we talked about Perunovic earlier. Ian Mitchell, defenseman on Denver. He's a Flyers draft pick, another really good player. Um, so those are the, the individual players I'm looking for, at least in terms of Hobie Baker. Uh, as someone from New England and a Boston Bruins fan, I'd like to watch John Beecher, the first-round pick. Uh, he's on Michigan. Uh, he looked really good from what we saw this summer. Um, a lot of people looked at that draft pick and said, eh, that seems to be reaching for him. We don't think he has a lot of offensive upside, kind of another bruising Bruins forward, if you will. And then he showed a lot of game, yeah. uh, a lot of skill. I want to see if that translates uh, you know, when he goes to Michigan. So I'm really interested there. And then my other one is, again, another you know, more bias uh, as, a, as a UNH hockey fan, Ty Conklin, uh, who is probably the best goalie in program history, with apologies to Mike Ayers. Uh, he played, I think, nine seasons in the NHL, played in the first three outdoor games. Uh, either I way, he was that. a- I love that fun fact. Yeah, yeah, of all people. Um, you know, it was really one of the best, one of the best goalies hockey's has ever seen. Uh, he was on the ice in 99 when UNH lost in overtime to me in the national championship game. He is the new goaltending development coach at UNH. Uh, and so, obviously, that doesn't mean he's suddenly going to turn Mike Robinson, uh, you know, into one of the best goalies in the country. But, you know, they have some good young goalies at UNH. I want to see if, you know, if he makes a big difference there. I want to see if he helps Robinson take his game to his next level and then help, you know, and then in turn, you know, make me look right for picking UNH as a sleeper this season. Uh, so those are just a couple things I'm following. Uh, but again, you know, it's going to be, I think, a really interesting season in college hockey. Uh, the parity is great, as we talked about. Hockey's, I think, is going to be is, is high again. It's good to see BC. Looks like they have another great team again and can comp compete for a national championship. But all around, it's going to be a great season. And again, we're really happy to have so many hockey's games on Nesson, uh, beginning this weekend with Providence in Maine. And I'm looking forward to watching all of it. I don't know about you, but I know I know I am. Uh, so you know that's that's kind of all we got for the first episode. 
next week we'll obviously have a lot more to go on once all these uh, games get underway. Anything else you want to add, Mike? No. Well, you know, let, let's throw it all out there. Let's. I want your you want to make a prediction? You I, want to make picks? I want. I want. We'll, we'll, we'll leave Frozen Four for later because uh, so we many can do teams. Frozen Four if you want. I'll no, do. No, I was going to do Hockey okay. East final. Uh, who do you got in the final? Who are your two teams? Who do you got winning it? That's a good one. Um, mm. I'm going to go with. I got BC over Northeastern. So you, so you think those freshmen are, are, are going to? I gonna think, you know, well, I mean, it, a part of it is I just have a lot of confidence in Jerry York. Uh, maybe those guys don't gel right out, right out of the Jordan gate. York now. Or Hall of Exactly. Yeah, we, yeah that's another, another uh, storyline. Um, you know, maybe those guys don't gel right out of the gate, but I got to figure by midseason, Jerry York's going to have those guys doing what he wants to do. And if they reach their potential, and he always gets the best out of his guys, I got to believe that by season's end, they'll, they'll be on top of the Hockey's Mountain. Um, that's just what I think. And I, I, I just like Northeastern. I, I think they always have a scrappy team. They always play well, always a sleeper. And, you know, I don't know if they're better than, than UMass or Providence. I just I like something about Northeastern come tourney time. And so that's, that's my matchup, BC, Northeastern. I can see both of those teams being in the Beanpot final as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm rolling with BC, unfortunately, because, uh, you know, again, as a UNH guy, I've grown up my whole life not being too big on BC. Uh, but I got to give them the, give give it to them this season. I think they're going to be going to be pretty good. What about you? So I, I'll, I'm gonna I got Northeastern, um, and I'll take them against. I think UMass. Uh, I think will find enough to uh, find the post Makar magic uh, to get back there. And, and I got Northeastern winning it. Uh, you know, kind of something. So we're both high on Northeastern. Yeah. Um, well, so the reason why I'm so high on Northeastern is is a theme that we talked about a lot here was. Oh, turnover. There's a lot of turnover in Hockey East, and really, w when you look at Jim Madigan's team the last few years, they haven't had a lot of those, like, they haven't relied on one class to lead them, kind of like UMass did, where, you know, they had one great class, you know, the Chafee's class, they're now juniors. That class has really taken UMass and cat catapulted them into where they are now. Northeastern's kind of had a steady flow of star players come in and out, right? and so they haven't really had too many huge losses. Obviously, Caden Primo is the, the big one in net. And that's going to be their biggest question mark this year. But I think they figure it out, uh, and I think they, they win their Hockey East title this year. Good. I love it. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me either. Um, I know you don't want to. I'm going to go right on, a, right on a limb and say that I think Minnesota Duluth gets it done this season. They're just a juggernaut. Uh, I, I like the three-peat this season. Uh, they're just that good. It's just that simple. I don't know if you feel the same way. But yeah, I, I mean. We need to see more, obviously, but if we're just going to do bold predictions, I think, barring, Duluth. Barring injuries, which obviously can happen to anybody, right. um, they look like the best team on paper, that's right. for sure. Uh, and, and, you know, certainly if they get to the Frozen Four, they have, the, they have more experience than just about anybody that could be in that tournament to get that job done. So, uh, and I think they're playing Lowell next weekend, and that'll be on Nesson. That, that'll so that'll be, be a, a great game. Yeah, that'll be a great game to watch. Um, I, th I, I think it's at Minnesota Duluth, uh, but that'll be on Nesson too. Um, yeah, again, it's going to be a great season in college hockey, especially hockey East, and it all starts again this weekend with Maine and Providence, Saturday at 4 p.m. on Nesson. Again, all of our hockey's coverage this season brought to you by Rockland Trust. Really happy about that. We're looking forward to it. And again, you know, thanks everybody for listening to us here on the maiden voyage of the Nesson College Hockey Podcast, and we'll get back to you guys next week.